Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today is Wednesday. We're going to hold off on our walk on Wednesday till tomorrow because we got big announcements. We're going to drop bombs. We're going to drop love bombs on everybody tomorrow. Boom. (laughs) Good morning. Good morning, Raghuna. Kastuba, Mara, good, good day to you. Someone's in a good mood this morning, Mara. Look at him. He's just like, no, he's happy. So I, went happy I went to bed in a I went to bed in a bad mood. Woke up in a good mood. Oh, okay. Usually it takes. I just got to go through that night. Go through all that crazy chaos and joy. That's what my dreams are. They're either like complete chaos or joy or a blend of all of it. And then it's like a whole new slate. Like the etch a sketch is shaken up, but I'm a new man when I wake up. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> it didn't work out yesterday. We're gonna try it again. It's attitude, Costuba. Attitude is everything in the material world. In the workplace, in relationship, and in spiritual life, that attitude, that enthusiasm is everything. Rupa Gos- that was Rupa Goswami. That was a very, very <laughs> loose translation of Rupa Goswami. Okay. All right. Well, I'm happy that you're happy, Raghunath. Thank you. It's going to be a good day. I think Finally you get finished. happy when people visit you there. It's super soul. Yeah, yeah man, it's not. She's like, he here. picks up. He picks up. Mm-hmm. I pick up a little in a live situation. I perk up a little. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. That's all yeah, I got for you. That, says you that all is, that's all we need, Raghunath. We could move on now to announcements. Yeah. Announcements. We have a back to recovery group meeting today at 1 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Trevor Vaughn's asana class is on pause for right now, but we do have Michelle Berger's offering an asana class for our Patreon members tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Okay. Oh, you know, there's another announcement. This Sunday, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, special interview with... Oh, Ch- uh, Chaitanya Charan is the back. The scientist. The spiritual scientist is back, yeah, and we're excited voting. for that. He's great. Always great. He's always great. This, uh, if, you, if you've never heard him speak, you can check out some of his old ones or just tune on Sunday. The guy is quite, quite fascinating. I love him. I could just sit there and listen to his charming little Indian accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a lot to say, too. So. Ever, ever talk to some Indians? They speak perfect English. But they speak and I can't understand. They're speaking perfect English. So I was like, please, please slow down. I can't understand anything you're saying. It's got nothing to do with the way you're saying. You know what I mean? It's no, like there's I don't different know. What are you talking about? Come on. No, are you talking about the accent? What they're saying? The you, accent, you... but the way that it's almost like the cadence in which they speak. <laughs> and it's hard to hear them, but they're not saying anything wrong. It's all right, but it's just like fast and it's got different inflections than we have. I see. Ever talk to a person from Scotland? Yes. They're speaking English, but you can't understand one word they're saying. <laughs> okay. It's fascinating. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Now's the time we move on to the nugget. 
All right, here's Nugget. Now it's it's uh not Herman Hess, it's J. C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis week, and we have a C.S. Lewis Nugget for you. Why don't you pull okay. up some info, Mara, on C.S. Lewis while I read the Nugget, and you can just share a little bit about him. Prolific author, Christian spiritualist, theologian. Find out his dates. Is find out his story, Mara. I know. I know that during World War II, he had like a radio broadcast that he, that you know popularized him, and then he did those that Chronicles of Narnia. I know that. Or that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Me and uh, Mara started watching yesterday, and I finished it yesterday or uh, the day, two days ago, and finished it yesterday. Is Seven Years in Tibet. Do you ever see that? No. What's that all about? With Brad Pitt when he was really hot. <laughs> he was a really good looking man I'll say that I'll say it you didn't say that it's you said he was really man. hot <laughs> <laughs> he was who cares <laughs> we're all adults here he's a good looking man and anyway um, generally here on Wisdom of the Sages we don't refer to people as hot male, <laughs> we female don't. Might regardless be the first right? Bhagavatam <laughs> class in the history of the Bhagavatam <laughs> <right>. where <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, so what's it about seven years it's time? about it's it, you know it's interesting it, it was a guy who goes to uh he a group of germans go to uh the himalayas to to do hiking in the himalayas in, in the 1939 and well then the war breaks out and india is at india is at war with germany they're the allies yeah. of the united states world war ii and india was on um, germany's side in that no, war. No, they weren't. No, they yeah, were because wrong. they were against the British, and the British were on the American side. You're wrong, sir. <laughs> Come on, man. Even Subhash Chandra Bose had had hooked up a deal with Hitler to return the, any Indians captured and all that. Anyway, That's, maybe, maybe I'm says, wrong. Mayor, Google that, please. <laughs> Whose side was India on in World War II? India was on. India was on the. Uh, anyway, they got put in a German hold, in a, like a holding camp. Okay. And they broke out and they escaped to Tibet and he went his own way. And he became friends. It's a true story. He became friends with the Dalai Lama boy, young Dalai Lama. Okay. Ba Baal Dalai Lama. <laughs> and, uh, and they're still friends. Okay. When, in 1989, when it was like published or something, they were still friends. And that's when, the, and then I think it was 1951, the Chinese attack. It was like horrible. Are there, is, uh, does it have a, is it merely like a historical or you know, is there a strong some philosophical element to it? Um, is there some wisdom? Is there some nuggets in there? Maybe I have to look deeper for the wisdom. Okay. <laughs> but you know, it's a very I mean, once you guys you have to get past story. the hotness, right? It's a very pal parallel. <laughs> I was just enthralled looking at him the whole time. No, but but there was a, there's another incredibly parallel story that went on. The same time, 1939, and a person left his family to go find God and went to India. Do you know the story? He goes to India and he meets a guru. He sort of gets into Hinduism and he's looking for the truth, not quite sure what's going on. And then he gets held in one of these holding camps. They're not like concentration camps, but they're not fun either. So he's held there with another bunch of other foreigners or people who weren't allies with India. And he meet he's German and he meets a sannyasi, like a monk, a sannyasi, German sannyasi, disciple of Prabhupada's guru. Mm -hmm. And and he initiated in this Prabhupada's Sarananda? disciple okay, sannyasi, his, his name was Sarananda. He initiates him on behalf of his guru while he's and he preaches to him about about being a devotee of Krishna. And these are the only two German disciples who are disciples of Prabhupada's guru. And he wrote it down in a novel and it was republished. Oh, Merit, cool. do you remember that? Um, yeah, I remember reading it. I don't yeah, what's the, the name of it? If someone knows the name of that, you can still get it. Mandela republished it. Yeah. OK. OK. Anyway, interesting. Yeah, Parallel let's get story. To the nugget. <laughs> get to the nugget now. OK. Um, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next world world. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. 
If you read history, you'll find that the Christians who did most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. It is since it is since Christians have largely ceased to think of that other world that they have become ineffective in this one. C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. What do you make? So the idea is that we're not thinking about the next world and being oblivious to this world. Okay. Right. That's where I th- think he's going with this. Which not, gotcha. we're not just like that's a false world dichotomy. Where... That's a false yeah. dichotomy. Yeah. And therefore just, you know, it's just like we have this um, thing, uh, this, the symptoms of Kanishta Adhikari, one who is very new to Bhakti. They repose the love in the deity, but they don't see the, the God in everyone. That is, so it, it's good that we have that affection for the deity. And then we bring that outside and we see love for everyone that we, we meet. Oh, that's another way. Okay, yeah, that connects where we were yesterday. Right? Yes. I like that. Adhikari, educated, remember that? That's yeah. the word nerd thing there, yeah, yeah, where yeah. we get the word education from. Yeah, but I was thinking about when we were talking about, the yesterday's nugget had to do with it, if the, speaking to the rituals that we do. Let me pull that one up again. I should have it right over here. It's a good one. Uh, that if these holy places, things, and days cease to yes. remind us, if they obliterate our awareness, that all ground is holy, that every bush, could we but perceive it, is a burning bush, then the hollows begin to do harm. Right? So, so in other words, that, yeah, but, but by going deep into this, quote, unquote, like otherworldly thought, right? It, yep. it, it's, it should make you more effective in this world, right? You should, like in other words, for instance, if by going very deep within, you come in touch with your own spiritual nature, you really begin to understand I'm eternal, that I am the energy of God, that I have this eternal connection, that I'm not this body, that I'm not all these mind states, and that I've been through so many. If you can realize that very deeply about yourself, then naturally you realize it about everyone. Mm. Right, that I'm not the only one. Everyone's like, and and so therefore your 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 otherworldliness becomes can become very powerful, a very powerful force within this world. And and I think, as I see, I, I've, this is, I guess has been a little bit of a pet peeve of mine recently, because as I see a shift, that as I see the political dynamics that are taking place in the world right now starting to kind of like seep in. To the spiritual discussion, mm-hmm. I, I see people trying to draw a very strong line that that you know otherworldly thought is actually problematic. <laughs> yes, right. Well, it's problematic to think yeah, of the it's, other world. It's all bypassing and, and so on, and, and and really, real spirituality means you're very deeply involved in philanthropic work, like right here in this world. And my point is that's a false dichotomy. It's not. That, it's not that one is opposed to the other. Let's not go there. If, as this is why I love you. This is realism. why I like you so much. <laughs> what happened to love? <laughs> you, you just downgraded me like in, in, in less than a second. This is why you're pretty I went from good. love to like. This is why... Then you thought of Brad Pitt again, and then you know, you were, I went down to like. <laughs> this is why you're a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that you know. So let's let's not get let let's go deeper, right? It, it, People that have deep spiritual realization, I don't think they'll buy into that false dichotomy. I think it's only when we're on the very surface level of spirituality can we buy into it. But if you have a deeper understanding, deeper spiritual experience, you realize that that otherworldly thought, it transforms one here in this world. And then you represent that. You live that. Mm-hmm. And I think that C.S. Lewis was catching. I don't know who he's talking about. In, in you know, like Historically, I have no, no idea of exactly what he's talking about, right? That, that he's saying that if you... If you read history, I mean, who's he talking about? Is he talking about a St. Francis, you know, who's like, who's he talking about? <coughs> and, and how did their otherworldly thought manifest in this world? I'm not sure who he's speaking about. But I think he's picking up on the same false dichotomy that we're seeing today. Mara, what can you say about C.S. Lewis briefly in two uh, sentences? Well, he also went to Oxford University. Oh, well, yes. Ooh. So he's my comrade oh, there. Exactly. Uh, what if you are? Yeah. Thought you'd appreciate that, Kastuba? <laughs> yeah, as well. Uh, he was became he was an atheist for a while, and then became okay. good friends with J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote um, uh, the, Hobbit the Hobbit and all those. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what, um, a, what a duo and, these guys are. Yeah, and then you know through his friendship with Tolkien, he um, became back. He uh, was into Christianity. 
And then he started writing books, and yeah. he became a big And he has over 30 oh, he was, books. I guess Lord he of the was, Rings. Thank you, Sarah Grahi. He was a professor of religion at Oxford or something like that? He was a chair of Cambridge University. Chair. Cambridge. The other one. That's the one you... But he made, maintained a strong attachment to Oxford. Okay. So. There's some rivalry between the two camps, apparently. Well, I'm going with the Cambridge camp. Thank you. <laughs> Um, by the way, um, jujitsu. Maybe they'll let you in. <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> what? Jujitsu not brings up the point about. Did you hear about Ronald Nixon? He's very good too. Oh, Ronald Nixon was him. like another 1921 in Europe. Godi. Uh, I don't think he was a Godi of Vaishnav. He was a Vaishnava. Okay. And uh, he was a in World War One, and he met a he. He went to Cambridge. And he had a mystical experience where his plane was shot down in World War One. Oh, I heard about this. And yeah. he felt somebody grab his wrist and take his plane very, very high in the sky. And then he woke up and he he woke up in a hospital and he was, and was an completely fine. And he was like, I have to find out who this. Oh, and this supernatural force was like speaking to him on his hospital bed. He says, you will find me in India. You'll find me in India. Okay. And he had this whole thing. And then he met this older Indian woman, Monica Davy, and she became his guru. Monica Davy? Are you Monica sure? Davy. Are you sure that's the name? Yes. Sounds a little odd to me. I Monica. just read this last okay. night. Um, and then, strangely enough, Christian Miracle, Jiu Jitsu, not just put it on the board. All right. But anyway, um, he ended up uh, going to India, be taking sannyas. She took sannyas from the Radha Raman, uh, Radha Raman temple. And they built an ashram in the Himalayas. His name was Sri Krishna Prema. Wow. Ronald Nixon. Not to be confused with Richard Nixon. Well, then that was a Gaudi Vaishnava. Oh, yes, I guess he was. That's right. Okay. Great. Interesting. Very interesting, Rogan. Thank Very you. Very interesting. Sharing. Isn't it weird? <laughs> Isn't it strange? Isn't it okay. weird to get into it back then? How cool would that be? In I mean, people have been getting into it long before then. <laughs> I know, but for an American to get into it. Or a British person, right? And he was very, this guy knew Sanskrit, Pali. He was really into Buddhism. And then he started falling deeper and deeper. And then he read the Bhagavad Gita. It, it would have been a real a real experience to, to be able to go to Vrindavan and so on back then. Well, he was a professor in Lucknow and in Benares, which is Varnasi. And then all of a sudden, he just like, he started, he, it was what happened. He was like a serious Buddhist. He studied Pali. And then he uh, pa became. What, Pali what? What does Pali mean? Pali? Pali Wali doodle all day. <laughs> Wait, no, well, you keep <laughs> saying Pali. Language, I don't know what you're talking man. about. Oh, that's a language. Okay. I didn't it's know if it was like <laughs> politics or policy. Something. No, Pali. Okay. Okay. Pali, Pali. Pali. <laughs> and then he, uh, what is Pali, by the way? Can you look that up, Mary? <laughs> I tried to. You're just going any squirrel now. <laughs> Let's let's reel it in, Rogna. Let's reel it in. Well, anyway, my point is, he got into it, then he fell in love with Krishna. He studied Buddhism, studied the Upanishads, and then he fell in love with Sweet Krishna. That's because he saw Radha Raman. Probably they brought him into the temple, and right. What do you think? I think it was his guru. Okay. Monica Devi. Both. Yeah. Monica okay. Devi. Okay. All right, did did Mara tell us about C.S. Lewis? Oh yeah, she just yes. did. Okay. Did he tell us about what else did I ask you? Poly. poly language. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a squirrel. <laughs> What's the poly language? It's a Middle Indo-Aryan liturgical language native to the Indian subcontinent. Now I know. Yeah. Next. It really clears everything up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raghunath. Ryan and the Muspitya Naram Chayeva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Madhuriyat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, I want you to offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord, Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Omigyana tamarandasya jnana anjana shalakaya chakshurun tamyena tasmai shri gudavedamaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance. My teachers 
are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Where are we, Mara? Reading from Canto 4, Chapter 19, Text 10. Text 10. So King Prithu. What's going on with King Prithu here now? Oh, yeah. So he was he was kind of uh, doing his horse rejuvenation ceremonies, these <laughs> special rituals <laughs> that were bring great auspiciousness. And there's you can see that there's this, we were reading yesterday about this incredible reciprocation between the humans and the uh, earth and the earth is just now the earth is abundantly supplying all the all, all the the wants and the needs of the people right mm. okay. what what, what okay. number is it Prabhu's? well now we're on 10 so okay. i think it was pretty soon any time now things are going to get interesting any day now king Pritu was dependent on the supreme personality of godhead who is known as at hoxaja what does it hoxaja ja mean mara rachel uh, Beyond our perception. All right, I'm going to stump Rachel's here. I'm going to stump Rachel today. Good job, Mara. Beyond our perception. Did someone cue you in on that? We had that like two weeks ago or something like that. I know, but yeah. sometimes you hear she it and forget it. She maintains, she retains these things. Hmm. I'm going to get Rachel she today. She has trouble with shlokas. Yeah, shlokas yeah. isn't her thing. <laughs> but when it comes to like, you know, facts and trivia, she's quite good. Mm. Yeah, she's sharp with it. Um, King Pritu is dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as Adhoksaja because King Pritu performed so many yagyas, rejuvenation ceremonies. Mm -hmm. He was superhumanly enhanced by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Interesting. So you got to picture this king, powerful king, but he's also been sort of like zapped by God to do the work of God. He's mm -hmm. no ordinary person. King Pritu's opulence, however, could not be tolerated by the king of heaven, Indra. Mm -hmm. And when we say heaven, of course, we don't mean the spiritual world. We mean higher, very, very refined material planets who tried to impede the progress of his opulence. Isn't that interesting? There are gradations of heavens. It's so interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. At the very least, this stuff is very interesting. It's fascinating. It goes so far, it goes so it deep. Fills it, goes in the, it fills in so many blanks. It does. Like, because I always thought when I was little, like, okay, my mother's Christian. She'll go to heaven. That's what I thought. But then I'm thinking, well, why does my mother get to go to the exact same place, you know, a Franciscan monk would go to or someone who's dedicated everything to? Like, why do they go to the exact same place? Because my mother does, you know, does a lot of mundane things, too. Oh, uh, She goes to the movies or she did whatever she's doing. You know, why do they get to get they get the same exact thing? And then there are people like, all oh, you got to do is believe, just believe. And then you go there too. So gradations makes come on, sense. give me gradations, it's not black and white. And then, then you've either like made the cut or you're completely off the team and you're going to burn eternally, not even for like a year or six months or, you know, I went to prison for three days or, or you're eternally going to hell. doesn't seem fair. I want gradations. I have a problem with that. Yeah, I have a problem with that. What I'm picking up from this verse is, I think it's interesting. He says, because King Prithu performed so many rejuvenation ceremonies, he was superly, he was superhumanly enhanced by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So in other words, he, he had this connection, right? And he was like vitalized by it. And I mm. think that that's something that's not, you know, it's speaking, here it's being, we're talking about a Shaktivesha avatar, you know, in, in the, in the form of Prithu. But this, in one sense, you know, we're all the Shakti of Krishna and we can all be empowered by and whatever empowerment that we have is his Shakti. And it's through this, through this connection that we become vitalized. You know, I feel it in my own life. Do you feel that in your life? Right like when you are, when your consciousness is focused on God, when your consciousness is, you know, hearing Bhagavatam, when, you're, when your consciousness is absorbed in your, in your pujas and, and so on, you feel vitalized. I know? feel like I'm God. <laughs> oh, man. is that wrong no i'm just kidding no i feel like i'm empowered yes yes yeah. no but all of it i'm looking at mara i'm looking at rachel i'm looking at Dominar priya these guys are all empowered they're all I, I see them very very focused on what they're doing and they get yeah. some special they, 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 they get up. some special glow yeah, yeah, not only glow i mean right. mara's the got the glow, glow in the background right now but it, it it's not only that, but it's like it's their a game. It's like mm -hmm. Krishna's giving them some special power. I mean, I will. You know what my alarm clock was today? It was Rachel just singing to her deities. Look at that. 
all morning, all morning. Yeah. My, my material stuff was like pipe down. I got a half hour more before my <laughs> alarm goes off. But she but was all vitalized. She was, she she was, was already in, in La La Land, yeah. in Lord Shaitanya La La Land. And it was great. There, there's uh, this there's this phrase, you know, it, it, it brings me to in one sense. This is the call in Bhagavad Gita, right? To like reconnect, just like plug in. Right. Just like plug yourself into that energy. So like Krishna, this is I'm going to read you a verse, Raghunath. OK, this is Bhagavad Gita 814. Do you know this one? Ananya Chaitaha Satatam. Ananya? No. Ananya Chaita Satatam. Ananya Chaitaha. When one's mind, the Chaita, is Ananya, like without deviation, Satatam always, you know, like having your mind always connected, right? The, the, the verse, the last verse, the last line of the verse says, Nitya Yuktasya Yoginaha, right? Uh -huh. Yuktasya, like being engaged, connected, like yoked to, right? Like it, you, you plug a plug into the wall, you know? Right. I so love that in, analogy. And nitya yuktasya, like stay regularly, constantly, steadily connected. You know, yukti, uh, nitya yuktasya yoginaha, that the, the devotee, the yogi, is always connected like that. So, so the verse reads, for one who, this is Krishna speaking to Arjuna, for one who always remembers me without deviation, I'm easy to obtain. And this is, you know, it, quite frankly, this is, you know, sometimes I hear objections to saying like bhakti is an easier path or something, but Bhagavad Gita is pointing it out again and again and again. It says sulabaha, right? Very easy to achieve. Right? Mm. So Krishna is saying, for one who remembers me without deviation, I'm easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement in bhakti, constant engagement in devotional service. So that's, that's, you know, in one sense, that's how the practice works. It's like, let me take my mind, which wants to go here or there, and let me just plug it in. And I can plug it in, like you're saying, Rachel's waking up early in the morning, she's doing her puja, she's doing her rituals, right? She's plugging in. You know, you tune in, you listen to Wisdom of the Sages, hopefully we're talking about Bhagavatam, and <laughs> you're plugging in. Sometimes. Right? Sometimes. You know, Sometimes oh, and, and, you, know you, you pick up that Bhagavad Gita, you, you read it for the next 15 minutes, you're plugged in. At least, you know, those 15 minutes were well you were used well, and um and 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 it'll also enhance my my contemplations as I move throughout the day. One way or another, we find a way. I'm going to cook my meal. I won't just cook my. I'll cook it for Krishna. I'll offer it to Krishna. I'm plugging One way it. or another. Right. Yeah. Saying it. Anyway. So, so Prithu is this example of someone that's totally plugged in. And and how did it describe it again? That he was super superhumanly enhanced. Superhumanly right. enhanced. You no, know, it's this such beautiful analogy uh, that you mentioned of plugging in. As like, what is a lamp, a, a hunk of metal and glass? And, and then the thing becomes alive. Mm, and if you just see a lamp and then you plug or a vacuum cleaner, you plug it in <laughs> yeah, and just the lamp, I think the whole thing comes alive. <laughs> and this is the beauty of the, the, the of, of getting into a tradition, a disciplic succession, mm. a, a disciplic lineage, whereas you can know nothing. And all of a sudden you plug in. And all of a sudden you start repeating. And that's what you would, it's a perfect example of you and me who were teenagers on the Lower East Side. And we met other teenagers who had heard the Bhagavad Gita, who had met people practicing and living bhaktis, bhakti, who, you know, other teenagers who had met the monks and heard from the monks and heard. And then all of a sudden you and me started philosophizing, pontificating, Ooh. right? <laughs> pontificating. And, and, <laughs> Maybe a little and, bit. Right. And, and we started thinking about these things. I am not a body. I'm a spirit that has a body. All beings are equal, but the bodies are different. I mean, this is stuff that our thought leaders are struggling over right now. And we were hearing it because we got plugged in at a young age. We started to think about these things at a young age. And um, you can also be new to yoga and know so much more than your yoga teacher because you plugged into a tradition where it actually teaches what these sacred literatures teach and that's why people are new to this stuff can come off sounding like they are aristotle or plato because they're plugged in gotcha. they may not you know and are you know the people we we're hearing it from weren't necessarily you know great saints or something but the, the things that they were saying were so heavy and deep and at a very new stage in your spiritual life you can you can come to great depths or great wisdom or a great knowledge and then and then you have the opportunity to apply it to your life 
Nitya Yuktasi Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in, Prabhu. All right. That's our takeaway for the day. Plug it in. That's a t-shirt right there. Plug it in. Bhakti. (laughs) Plug it in. Okay. Disciplic succession placed in my possession. Complete. So sweet. A satisfying taste for an empty race. You see, there's a fire in the city. A fool won't admit it. And only a fool will sit right in it. Truth has been spoken for all mankind. And it's a mad, sad world when you can find man confined to the grind. And they don't even mind to be working for some jerk and leave their life behind. In illusion, in confusion, the world's greatest brains create more problems, not solutions. Expand our bold stand. There can be hope for modern man. The message of the Bhagavad. Boom. Baba. Ray Capo. Next 11. Part of his generation. <laughs> It's a good song. <laughs> it is a good song. When Preetu Maharaj was performing the last horse sacrifice. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. I'm wrong. You're allowed to correct me. You just got to be right. Okay. When Preetu Maharaj was performing his last horse rejuvenation, rejuvenation ceremony, ceremony, King Indra, invisible to everyone, he had that. He was in disguise, actually. Okay. It Stole... wasn't visible that he was Indra, but he was disguised. Okay. I would love to see his disguise it was kit. A sannyasi disguise. It would be amazing to see, wouldn't it? <laughs> Stole the horse intended for sacrifice. He did this because of his great envy of King Pritu. We, we were speaking about one issue with have, being a have. And everyone's got this. Being a have. Once you're a have, there's envy. Like, I want what they have. I'm scared of people who are going to have more than me. It's not like the, it, it's the scarcity mentality. When someone's, when someone's moving up, it frustrates us. This, this has been an ongoing theme. Envy yeah, I, this week. I, I think the idea was that to, you know, it says that, that Indra had done, himself had done 100 horse rejuvenation ceremonies. Um, and I, I assume, I'm not sure about this, but I assume that means that that's how he obtained the position of Indra, right? It's like, to, it, it's such a nearly impossible task to, to, to achieve and to achieve it a hundred times, you know, it would take incredible determination, incredible piety, and incredible dharmic, you know, um, de- you know determination. Mm. And so now he sees that another person is about to do what he did. You know, he's about to, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like say an athlete, achieves some right the one minute mile yeah. you're like oh, i did it i did it oh, or like man. a quarterback's like i you know i won three super bowls and now this guy's about to do it you know, he's, like, and he wins two he wins five yeah now he's right on the verge of doing this like oh it starts to eat you or you know like there's a home run these guys hit a certain number of home runs right you know i hit 70 home runs in one season now the next guy's about to do it my right. whole reputation is built on that now i'm number and, two now i'm number and, two you know, forever yeah and, and so uh and, and in this position, in this case, it's almost like I'll lose my job, you know, because, again, Indra is a post, right? It's not a it's not exactly a person, but you become the Indra. And so uh, when he's seeing Pritu doing this, although he's dignified, although he's dharmic, although he's famous and powerful, he becomes a fool. He makes a fool of himself. And so much so that it's like a scene from I Love Lucy, right? He disguises himself. He puts on a costume. You know, <laughs> it's crazy, right? She's, but, she's, it, Lucy's and, put on many costumes. Many costumes. And and, um, and again, the, the 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 verses that we were reading yesterday, they were showing that like everyone was there. It wasn't just like this is a perfect, you know, it's like a perfect sitcom setup, right? It wasn't. It wasn't just like an ordinary event, but like. It was an event that brought all the most important universal figures were there. You know, the exact people that he would last want to be embarrassed in front of. But because even his position as the highest level materialist couldn't relieve him of fear and anxiety, he, he makes a fool of himself in front of everyone. So that's what's going to happen right now. Text 12. Text 12. <laughs> it's amazing where my mind can go so quick. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back to the Bhagavatam. There you go. When King Away Indra from was... Brad Pitt, back to the Bhagavatam. No, you know what? It was on Andy Kaufman. Okay. Okay, well, let me go there. Yeah. When King Indra was taking away the horse, he dressed himself to appear 
as a liberated person. He's like, okay, horse, you come with me. Actually, this dress was a form of cheating for it falsely created an impression of Dharma. Right? He dressed as like a holy man and he walked over. Oh, I'm just going to take this horse. Don't bother me. Okay. When Indra went into outer space, what? In this great way, the great sage Atri saw him and understood the whole situation. Oh, look, it's Indra in disguise, yeah. stealing a horse. So his, his, you know, could imagine it must have been a really good disguise. Right. And well, what's, what's, what is it? It's just like a robe. I could do that. I would imagine it was a lot more than a robe, right? I could do well, that. What else do what else does <laughs> Swami's wear? No, but a it, turban? It, there's all different kind of ways you can disguise your face, your hair, your, you know, there's, there's all kind of things he could have done. He could have covered himself. They have I think no it does hair. mention he covers himself in ash. You know, he's, he was doing things to cover it up. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. And, and um Ash. Okay, you got me with Ash. <laughs> I got you with Ash. <laughs> Good if he did ask, that would be a hard disguise. Okay. You know that. You know that crazy story in if in Rana Swami's book, like the opening yeah, story, the same thing. where he disguises himself in ash. It's like that. That was a good story. That there was a go. great way to open the book. It was a good way to open the book. Journey at home. the at the yeah at the Pashupatinath Temple in Nepal. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's disguised now, and he's grabbed that horse, and then he's taken off. You know. Even though the disguise must have been very good, a, a sage like Achi is just picking up on it. Like, right? Mm. It's just like he, he's, he, can, he could sense something was, even these sages, you know, like the, 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 they're, they're clued in. Like maybe like the left part of his body was twitching or something like that. You know, like they can read all the, own, he's, he's understanding something's going on here. Hold it. That's Indra. Right? I the should proper, disguise myself and go in to see Lord Jagannath. Me and Jujitsu Nath should do that. I know people who've done it. We're going to Puri. We're going to Puri. Jujitsu Nath, if we could disguise ourselves, we can get in that temple. Now, there's two ways to look at that, Raghunath. Burning, I mean, one... loving eagerness? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it way. is. Or is it, do you want to tell a great story? That <laughs> or could Why not? That be... <laughs> that's a good story. Tell but, that you story. know, Rupa Goswami didn't go into that temple. Sanatana Goswami didn't go into that temple. Haridas they Thakur, they, no, they didn't. Rupa Goswami did not go see Lord Jagannath? Come on. No, he did not. Who said? Chaitanya Charitamrita. You quote that. You qu what are your sources, Kostuba? I just I just quoted it for you. Chaitanya he, he lived with Haridas Thakur, who didn't go in the temple as well, because they, they, they felt themselves too fallen to go into the temple. See? Huh. See, got you thinking there now. Well, right? I'm going to go in. <laughs> okay, that's right. enough for going in. <laughs> right. He said he'll cover. They will beat you down. They will beat you know what? They catch you. Yeah. Then that'll be a good story. Getting that beat is, down. Go. Okay. So um, in the commentary, Prabhupada begins to speak. The, the, Prabhupada draws something out. Even <laughs> Bhagavatam draws out something that's important here, is that this disguising oneself as a renunciate, right, or disguising oneself as a holy man, that Indra introduced this at this point, you know, and that it's something that goes on. And, and it has carried, he created a tradition that carries on to this day. Right. Maybe we can read a little of the commentary here. 12? Yes. I lost my place. Yes, 12. All right. Verse 12. Oh, this is a good one. The word <laughs> pakanda, pakanda, used in this verse is sometimes pronounced pashanda, pashanda. Both of these words indicate an imposter. Who presents himself as a very religious person, but in actuality is sinful. Want to hear great? A dharma. By, yeah. by the way, sinful. Um, Mara, what did we do? We just heard this word nerd thing from Jeffrey Armstrong. We what said, uh, he, he was saying this is very similar. It's just, this, he goes, don't say sinful. That's a Christian thing. Okay. He says, Papa means pain, it causes pain. So it's not a, that God is doing this to you. You're causing, but your own you're pain. causing your own pain. Hmm. Pop them, okay. Pop them, okay. Indra took up the saffron-colored dress as a way of cheating others. This saffron dress has been misused by many imposters who present themselves as liberated persons or incarnations of God. Hmm. This is a this is a thing in India. It's a thing. You know, I'm God. I, they have some Sidhi. 
And so they say, I'm God. And then they get followers and they get worshiped. In this way, people are cheated. As we have mentioned many times, the conditioned soul has a tendency to cheat. Therefore, this quality is also visible in a person like King Indra. It is understood that even King Indra is not liberated from the clutches of material contamination. Thus, the word amukvam, yeah. am, amukvam eva, meaning as if he were liberated. He's not liberated, but as if he were liberated. The saffron dress worn by a sannyasi announces to the world that he has renounced all worldly affairs and is simply engaged in the service of the Lord. Such a devotee is actually a sannyasi or a liberated person. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Anashrita karma palam karm yam karma karotiya san sa sannyasi chayogi cha na niragnir na chakriyaha. Important. One who is, important. Six one. One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he have obligated is in the renounced order. And he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire or performs no work. This is the Bhakti Yogi's verse right here. Hmm. It's got nothing to do with our social position. I've given up everything of this world. Hey, you can give up everything in this world and be attached to the fact that you're so renounced and now people are giving you respect. Oh, look at the, look at how this guy lives. He's so, and he acts, the person might even, I like having followers. I like having that worship you, yet. You could be in this world, but really understanding nothing here is mine. Hmm. Nothing here. I'm doing my duty. This is my service. These are my responsibilities in this world that are leading me to the next world. They're, they're woven in with deep spiritual understanding. So I'm taking care of my children. I'm giving them love, but I'm understanding they're not my children. Ultimately, they're on their own spiritual journey. Um, that that is part of sannyas for a bhakti, mm -hmm. a bhakti yogi. This verse six one, it comes at a point in the Bhagavad Gita, where it's it's you know for for several chapters now. You know, it starts in the second chapter, but it it continues heavily in the third chapter, and the fourth chapter again heavily in the fifth chapter, where Krishna is trying to explain something to Arjuna. Right, Arjuna is in a state of anxiety. He's in a state of stress. He's he, mm. he's practically had like a nervous breakdown right there on the battlefield. Right, intense anxiety, and he's thinking anxiety attack. You could call he's it. having an anxiety attack, and, and he's thinking of the people that he's known in life who are free of anxiety, and those were the yogis in the forest. Right. Yeah. And he's thinking, you know what? It's he at one point even says, and it, th th some of these phrases that he uses are really um, full of meaning, you know, like when he says, "It would be better for me to live as a beggar, right, than to fight this mm. battle." That, in a sense, what, what he's saying there is like, better for me to live as one of these yogis, right? I'm, I'm a I'm a warrior. The, the 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 way that the warrior lives is that they give charity, right? They don't take it, right? It's like. They go out there, they take responsibility for the state, they tax the citizens, and they give in charity. They're known, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so when he says, better for me to live as a beggar, that's almost, it's a quite, quite a shocking statement coming from him. But he's thinking, you know, these people that, th these yogis that I've known in the force, even though they don't have any possessions, even though they, they don't have any fame, any political power, uh, you know, any kind of material opulence, they're free of anxiety. And that's what I want more than anything in life. So he's thinking, I want to become a yogi. And what Krishna is telling him is, you can be a yogi and you can become free of anxiety, but it doesn't mean that you have to wander off to the forest. That's not, that's, that is one authentic way to do it. But Arjuna, you don't have the, what's the word, nerd? Adhikari. You don't have the adhikari. That's not, you, you're not qualified to perform that kind of yoga. Because if you were to go out there right now, where would your mind be? Even if you're sitting out there all alone in your yogic posture, right? Where's your mind going to be? You're going to be thinking of Duryodhana, how, how he mistreated Draupadi. You're going to be thinking about how your evil cousins have taken over the government. How, mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be thinking all these things. Your mind's so better for you to engage your mind and engage your body in service. But, but and, th and this is the point, but you can also be, and, pro and, and uh, Krishna uses the word here, a sannyasi. Right, you can also be a renunciate. Now we're talking about Indra, who disguised himself. Indra's an enjoyer in a sense in life, right? He's like he's got material opulence on a very high level, and then he puts on the robe that indicates I'm a person that's given up all material enjoyment. Right, that's what that saffron cloth is meant to represent. I'm I've renounced material relationships. 
I've renounced material enjoyment. My whole life has been made an offering to God, and I just and, and that's what I do 24/7. I I'm externally as well as internally renounced. No, and sometimes oh, I'm going. No, no, you go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah. Sometimes we get given these deep rooted attachments where we have to play out this role. We have to do some time in the material world. But when we add transcendental knowledge, we're using that, the thing that we're doing. I'm a parent, that's, that's doing time. And you're attached to those kids and you're attached to raising them. And then all of a sudden you, and, but you, and by adding Bhakti, you're adding the wisdom of the Bhakti traditions, you understand they're actually not my kids. They're not my actual children. And when you add that to the teach, to your life experience, you, you use that experience to purify yourself of that eyes, that concept of I'm the owner, I'm the controller, I'm the possessor of things, of people, of lovers. It's not real anyway, but sometimes you have to do that time in the material world. And if, if, if we're strongly attached and sometimes I can say in my own life, I was like, man, I need to do this like material thing to purify myself of it. You know, and the yogis say that's like, you're using, you're using the, right? You the walk thorn, in the forest, you get the a thorn. thorn in your foot and you have no tweezers, you're in the forest. So you use a thorn to remove the thorn. You use another thorn. You're using the material world to purify yourself. You're of using matter. work to purify yourself of the results of your work. Mm. Right. Mm. We say I'm. I've been bound in this world by my worldly activities. Hashtag use the thorn. So, so then, then, the, then you think, okay. Well, so the way to counter that is to leave behind all worldly activities. And what what's being shown here is that you can actually engage those worldly activities in a yogic way to free yourself of the results of your previous ones. I, I get this realization like on a daily basis. Like I'm just doing time here. I'm mm. just doing time to learn some lessons adding the bhakti philosophy to it. And I'm out there mowing the lawn, chopping stuff. I'm like, I'm just doing time here. I'm, why am I mowing the lawn? Because we're having a big program this weekend. People are coming over. Cindy, Leo Gaysfree, Swinney Lundford, she's coming here. We're doing a whole bhakti thing. And I'm mowing the lawn. But I love mowing the lawn. Kostu, but that's one thing you lack. You lack the ability to mow lawns living in New York. I'm going to get you, you know? in here. I'm going to put you on my Kubota you know? tractor. I've mowed, I've mowed lawns before, Raghunath. I've, yeah, I've you know mowed what? a I'm lawn gonna, in my day. Oh, I know, but you're, you're missing out on that joy. Or maybe you're above it. Maybe you've already purged that thorn. But okay. I'm going to get you on that tractor, and you're going to experience the bliss, the samadhi of mowing. Okay, we'll see. But but in any case, so what we're here, this verse is actually, it's a, it's a very, it comes at the point where Krishna's, Arjuna just hasn't gotten it through chapters three, four, five, and here in chapter six. Are you listening to me, Raghu? You're, you're I'm writing you're down the body of mowing. <laughs> All right, it's an important statement. All right. I thought, okay, go. But but, but th at this point in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is going to say it's almost like when someone wants to do something and you know it's not good for them, and you're trying to convince them. Yeah. And they and they just won't. They're just not hearing the message. And then you have to kind of spell out everything of what it means about what they're about to go through. So in this chapter, Krishna is going to describe what the path of Ashtanga Yoga looks like, what it, what it looks like to wander off to the forest and live alone and focus and concentrate the mind and so on. And when Arjuna hears it, at that point he says, okay, I get it. I can't be that kind of yogi. My mind is too difficult to control. Mm. What do I do now? All right. But in this verse, what Krishna is saying, it, it's really significant. And honestly... Is, is part of what sets the Bhagavad Gita apart from the earlier Upanishads, right? The, the Bhagavad Gita is, is sometimes called the Gita Upanishad mm -mm. because it's like if the, the Mahabharata is called the fifth Veda, right? There are four Vedas and they have Upanishads that, that explain the, the, um, the Vedas. And so here you have the Mahabharata, which is like the fifth Veda, and the, and the, and the Bhagavad Gita is like the, the Upanishad of the fifth Veda. So sometimes they call the Gita Upanishad. But in this Upanishad, where there's the previous Upanishads, they're not so clear on this. The Bhagavad Gita is abundantly clear on this point. It's, it's, it's an it's encouraging one to stay connected in this world, right? To, to, to not only not renounce your social roles, but to embrace them and transform them into powerful paths of yoga. And so even the language that Krishna uses in this, in this particular verse, it's almost like, um, it's, it's, it's almost like, I say it's like speaking in a human way. And when I say human, it's like when we, when we want to emphasize something, we exaggerate it in a sense. 
So like if, if it's taking a long time for the bus to come, we say something like, oh, this is taking forever. Right. right. It's not taking forever. Here, Krishna actually says that a person who, is, who, who renounces their social roles is not a renunciate. He, he even said, now certainly they're playing that are, but here he says he's not a renunciate, right? right? So, so he says, and he uses that word sannyasi, and he uses the word yogi, right? He, and he's saying that, if, if we look at the words, he says, anashrita karma palam. Ashrita means to take shelter of. So anashrita means I don't take shelter of, or I, I, I don't think I'm gonna find happiness in, right? I, I don't take shelter of it. Anashrita karma palam. I, I don't think I'm going to, the person who's like, I'm not taking shelter of my karma, the fruits of my work, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the person who's not taking shelter of that, but still, karyam karma karotiya, that works as they're obligated in this world, right? I'm a father, let me be a father, right? Let me, let me take up, I'm a mother, let me be, my, I'm a husband, I'm a wife, I'm a business person, I have duties in this world. I'm going to embrace them. I'm going to work as I'm obligated without taking shelter of the fruits, without, without, without thinking that that's my source of happiness. Krishna says, sa sannyasi cha yogi cha, that that person is the real sannyasi, the real mystic, the real yogi. And then he goes, and then he says, na, and who is not? The person near Agnir, near Chakri. No fire. Lights, no fire. Lights, no fire. What does that mean, lights, no fire? Meaning right. usually the the renunciates are lighting these do it worshiping god no, through the fire no 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 the renunciates are not lighting the fire that's the point in other words it's it's like say like say you get a house like say you get a, you buy a new house Raghunath, right yeah so then in, in the vedic culture what do you do you perform a ritual right to kind of like sanctify interesting the home. Uh, you buy a house you do a ritual you buy a house you get you, a car you do a ritual you do a ritual you have a baby you know you get Rituals. pregnant whatever there's a ritual, ritual. And each one requires lighting, you know, lighting the fire and, and doing the ceremony. So here it says, not the person who lights no fire. Once you become a sannyasi, like a, an external renunciate, you no longer have a home. You no longer have a car. You no oh, longer that's, have you children. Know, I never knew that. So that's what that meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so in other words, I don't have any social connections. It's not necessary for me to perform all of these rituals because I've left that world behind. Right, hmm. and I, and I do and in akriyaha, and I don't have any duties. Right, I don't have the duties of a husband. I don't have the duties of a father. I don't have the duties of a business person, you know, ethical, you know, duties in, in my workplace and so on. Because I don't have a job, right? Hmm. And so Krishna hmm. here, he's he's going so far to say that person's not a sannyasi. Right? He, he's saying the real sannyasi is the one who works as they're obligated, but doesn't take the fruits. This is this is detachment, right? So in other words. Now the fact is, there's going to be plenty of places where Krishna glorifies the other the, the, that that typical sannyasi, right? The one that has walked away from the world because he's trying to drill this point home to Arjuna. Get, don't you get my point? Mm. Right? It's internal renunciation that we're after here. External renunci external renunciation may or may not be good, right? But it's the but ultimately it means nothing if one doesn't have the internal renunciation, and the internal renunciation can be cultivated through working in this world and embracing your social responsibilities. And so Prabhupada's quoting this verse here in this commentary about Prithu, saying nowadays you get people that, that'll throw on that saffron cloth without having the internal renunciation. And it's just a scam. Right? Scam. And, and you know, in India especially people, you know the thing is, in India especially people, when they see that cloth, they show respect. Right. right. And, and so and, oh, that, and that's an easy, that's an easy fix. I just put on, yeah. I, I want respect. I need respect. I get no respect. You get money. You I'm get just going to buy some clothes. Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. buy these clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Prabhupada used to say when he came to America, when he would see that Western people started buying into this, he was like, okay, I get it. If some Indian simple villagers kind of like are not savvy enough to kind of like, you know, Make see it. through this facade. Right. Right. But but you Western advanced people like I can't believe that you're going for this, you know, and and so uh, so so in any case, that's one thing that's playing out in this chapter is it's the beginning of that phony kind of holy man, right? Mm -hmm. And that we should see through that. Well, thank uh, you, thank you, Kostuba. Thank you. This was a good chapter, a good yeah, uh, a good day. It was a good day today for a good day. It's a good day for a good day. Yeah. Yeah, Mara, any takeaways? Yeah, we've got some good takeaways today. Right. Attitude and enthusiasm is everything. Tattoo. <laughs> By going deep within, you become more effective in this world. 
too long. <laughs> when your <laughs> consciousness <laughs> is focused on God, you're <laughs> too, vitalized. Too we, like, we're starting to get like really judgmental about like, like <laughs> too long. Next. <laughs> All right. Why did you say that again? Say that again. When Read your that again. When your consciousness is focused on God, you're vitalized. This. <laughs> you because you. You can be free from anxiety by engaging in service. Nice, nice. Add bhakti, add bhakti wisdom to your time in the material world. Mm -hmm. mm. You're doing time. Once you're doing a half. People are going to stop writing these in. <laughs> they were too judgmental. Don't take it personally, people. If I'm giving you a, if I'm giving you a gong, like. <laughs> what about me? Take I take it personally, Prabhu. Don't take it. They're not yours. They're not yours. <laughs> She's helping to craft them. Once you're a have, there's envy. Yeah, there can be. Once you're a have, there's envy. All right, I got some really good short ones that you're gonna like. You mm -hmm. actually wait a second. There are haves that are not envious. I said it's that. True. I take it back. It's true. It's okay. true. Once well, you're envious, you're envious. How about that? Okay. okay. I can't envious. argue with that. <laughs> you can be. You can be a have and not be envious. <laughs> All right. If it's you possible. deeply understand, it's not yours. Oh, okay. Right? You well, then you're. Th well, then in one sense, you're you're a have not because you're like I have nothing. Boom. Right. Okay. Okay. Next, you, please. Use the thorn. Use the thorn. You, oh, boom! There you go. Nice, tight. Use tight, the use thorn. Use the thorn. Plug in the box. We're, we're use the thorn from. <laughs> use Barry. the thorn. It's a good band name. <laughs> yeah. Plug in the bhakti. Plug in the, plug in the bhakti. That's good. Cool. I think that's it. Plug in the bhakti. That's the one. Is plug in the bhakti. Lawn Brad mowing Pitt. samadhi. Lawn, Lawn mowing samadhi. Ash disguise. <laughs> These are getting really. Ash people are tightening them up. We're not gonna. Ash, you really want to tight? I'm tight them. Ash disguise. <laughs> and Brad Pitt hot. Brad Pitt hot. Brad Pitt yes. Hot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Big deal. I can say it. I'm okay. With my sexuality, I have uh, no problem with you being okay with your sexuality. I'm just wondering how appropriate it is to bring it into this sangha. That's all. External beauty is not eternal beauty. I get that. Just got nice hair. <laughs> okay. Right. I never had nice hair. Even the nicest, even the best hair times of my life, it's never that nice. Okay. But when you apply knowledge to that, you're like, okay, you know what? Big deal. You've Not had that. that beautiful hair. You've been hotter than Brad Pitt in some hair. lifetime. In some huh? lifetime, you have been. Yeah, it was also a frog in a lifetime. Okay, and he was too. I had too. nice hopping legs. And he was too. How about that? Brad Pitt was a frog. Brad Pitt was a frog. There you go. Hashtag. <laughs>